Hello everyone, welcome to The Journal, a genealogical mystery solved by Ancestry.com Library Edition. My name is Suzanne Horton and I'm Head of Reference Services for the Juliet Hampton Morgan Memorial Library, which is part of the Montgomery City County Public Library. This project is near and dear to me. Basically, the background to this is that my paternal grandmother, whose name was Elmira Louise Hill, passed away in 2002. When she passed, her collection of papers and photos and mementos were left to me. Um, this collection included a handwritten journal by an unknown female author dated September 6, 1927. My great aunt Ida, who was the last surviving member on that side of the family, um, told me that a female relative had written the journal and that she was the first wife of my grandfather. Um, other than that, she wasn't sure of the details, and my great-aunt, unfortunately, has since also passed away. Recently, I uncovered the box with all of my grandmother's belongings and reread the journal in its entirety and decided to try and figure out using clues within the journal and um, things, pieces of information I could find on Ancestry.com to try to figure out who this woman was and a little bit more her and her life. Here are some pages from the journal. Um, I was very blessed in that her handwriting was fantastic. It is very legible and um, she was very organized. She wrote nearly every day. As you can see, she started the journal on September 6, 1927. Just a few words about my life since my 21st birthday. So this was her 21st birthday, which was the first piece of useful information that I could use in Ancestry.com because I knew when her birthday was. Um, 21 years before 1927 was her birthday, and we also have the date of her birthday. So to begin the search, I went to Ancestry.com. You can access this from the library's homepage, um, also from the Alabama Virtual Library. Right now, until the end of March of 2021, this is free from home um, access. When the library is open to the public, um, you can only get access to this in the library, physically in the library, but right now because of closures and um, pandemic restrictions and things like that, you can access this for, from home anywhere in the state of Alabama. So to begin, um, I just clicked on the search tab at the top, and then there is a drop down that occurs once you click on search and I hit all categories. And then I entered in my paternal grandfather's name. Um, his name was Willie Richard Hill. Um, I knew that he lived in Rocky Mount, North Carolina. And then I went from there. Of course, I was able to find several pieces of information um, about my grandfather here, um, including the 1920 census. Um, so I decided to start with the 1920 census to see if I can find more information there. Using the 1920 census, I was able to uncover some interesting things. Now, the one thing that I thought about going into looking at this record was that people during this period were not as mobile. Typically, if you associated with certain families or even members of your own family, extended family, they're more likely to be geographically close to you. This is in fact, still the case for a lot of people, but we are a bit more mobile now in today's society. So I wanted to look at not just the page that my grandfather appeared on, which is uh, at the bottom of this page here, um, and he was a hill, but I also wanted to look at the pages around to see if there were other hills or um, Stallings. And the reason I wanted to look for a Stallings family is because my grandmother, was the Stallings, and I know that this woman was related to my grandmother somehow. I wasn't quite sure how. Um, so I looked at the previous page, and um, immediately I found my grandmother, who is the second arrow from the bottom there, or the second arrow on the page. Um, my great-great-grandfather was G.A. I remember 
my family talking about that. And then Louise Stallings was my grandmother. At the time, she was two years old. Um, so she was very young. But if you see a couple entries above that, there's another Stallings family. This woman, who was the daughter, Lily May, um, her birth date and her information absolutely matches up to our mystery woman. So I was pretty sure this was our mystery woman and that that quickly I had uncovered who this woman was. So getting this information, um, a Lily Stallings or Lily Mae Stallings, I uh, went back to Ancestry and looked around some more using my grandfather's name and this woman's name. And sure enough, here we are. I was able to find a marriage certificate for a Lily Mae Stallings and Richard Hill for March the 2nd, 1928. And here is the ancestry record, um, which basically it takes the information on the original record and transcribes it out, um, which is really great if, if uh, the original writer's handwriting is not good. Um, in this case, the writing was fine, and I will show you the original document here. A lot of it was typed, which was helpful. But an interesting thing about this record is that Lily May is scratched out, and the name Lealer May Stallings is added in. So we have a variant of her name, which makes things a little more complicated. During this period, and still to a certain extent, you have issues with literacy. So people may not even know how to actually spell their own name, um, or if they have a very thick accent, people may hear something else. I feel like Lee Aller's kind of a country way of saying Lily. Um, so it could be any number of things. However, this is a very clear handwriting, and it's very similar to the handwriting that appears in the journal, the rewrite of the name there. So I'm thinking this is how she preferred to spell her name. So, who was Lily, Leela, Lealer, May? Um, according to the journal, um, which I will share more photos of later, uh, during the seven months covered uh, during that period, she led a very active life. Um, she worked tobacco at least 30 times. She cooked and baked seven times, sewed six, ti six times, including making something called a tobacco canvas, um, washed iron clothing, and almost daily was visited by friends or visited friends. She uh, attended an ice cream social, um, went to the local aviation field and watched planes taking off and landing, went to the county fair, attended two hog killings, and drove a car for the first time, which promptly died, leaving her and a cousin stranded. Uh, her main interest in the journal, other than my grandfather, of course, was going to the pictures. She attended at least 20 movies over the course of the seven months recorded. Um, she mentions many of these movies by name, um, which I will share the titles of those with you. Um, she mentions going to the pictures more than that, but doesn't list the names of the movies, so we're not sure what she watched, but it was one of her main hobbies. So from verbal family history, unfortunately, I knew that Lily Mae passed away in childbirth. And unfortunately, the child also passed away. So using Ancestry.com Library Edition, I was also able to track down her birth, or rather her death certificate. Also using the free service, I was able to track down what familial connection Lily Mae had to me. So she was my first cousin three times removed, meaning her father and my third great-grandfather were brothers. So that made her and my grandmother's second cousins. Um, that's very complicated, but basically uh, a woman married my grandfather, passed away, and then he married that woman's second cousin, who was my grandmother. Also, while looking through some of the items in my grandmother's collection that she left to me, I came across a photo of a very young girl with a version of Lila Mae written on the back of it in a very clear script and the time frame of the photo I, I think this is her I think this was our author I then found some photos of a very very young woman with my grandfather as a younger man and I only knew him as an older man but I recognized his face 
this slightly older woman and the young girl in the photo absolutely favor each other. So I believe these are all photos of Leela May. Here's the original younger girl. Um, we think it's probably from around 1917. Um, it's got another, another alternative spelling with Lealer May. Um, I really think she was trying to be creative with her name. Um, she was probably about 10 years old here. She, at this point, still could have been really interested in going to the movies. And um, starlets tended to have unique spellings of names and whatnot. So I feel like that all kind of influenced her. This looks like a school photo to me or something, obviously has a bit of a uniform on here too. So um, I think that all kind of influenced these, these versions of these names. Here are the older pictures. Um, she was obviously a very statuesque and tall woman. My grandfather was rather short. Um, I think uh, with very little evidence other than just a gut feeling, I feel like these are wedding photos. Um, they look to be dressed up and they were country people, they worked tobacco a lot. I don't feel like they just uh, wandered around in their Sunday best like this, except for perhaps on Sundays after church. Um, but these photos, I believe, are of Lily May and my grandfather, so the author of the journal. I'm not sure who the people in the boat are, um, but that is definitely Lily May in the front. Um, also, uh, nice chokehold by Lily May um, on my grandfather here. <laughs> um, obviously they got along well and had a good time. A lot of photos you, you do not see people smiling or carrying on and this is a good picture, a good candid shot of um, really a, a good physical ex expression of uh, humor and love. So the movies that Lily May watched, um, of course were all silent movies. Uh, the first speaking film was not until 1927 and um, Rocky Mount, North Carolina uh, was probably not the first to adapt to that technology. Um, so all of these were silent films. Um, she seemed to watch everything. Uh, there were a whole lot of westerns which of course were popular at the time. Um, some romances. Several of these movies are considered classics even in the silent film era. One of the most interesting ones for me was the fifth one down here, Motherhood, Life's Greatest Miracle from 1925. She would have watched this as a basically, a, for lack of a better term, a rerun. Um, it is the earliest surviving example of a film directed by an African-American woman. Her name was Lita Lawrence, and really not much else is known about Mrs. Lawrence. She, there are no other surviving examples of her work, but they do know that she was involved in, uh, was the director of this. Um, the film is very pro-motherhood in a bit of a sexist way, like it's the only way a woman can be a woman and, and so on and so forth, but um, according to the notes in the journal, um, Lila May was very... Uh, moved by this and enjoyed it thoroughly. She also talks often about some of the starlets in the films, which if you go back to the pictures, you can see that hairstyle. It seems a bit, you know, it girl to me. It seems like she was trying to replicate what she saw in the movies. She also mentions Ken Maynard multiple times in her journal. I feel like he might have been her celebrity crush. He was involved in the westerns. He was a, a trick writer. Um, and she talks about Ken and Mr. Maynard, so I think he was near and dear to her. So going back to Ancestry, uh, to finish up, I did search for her and I did find her death certificate. Um, unfortunately, she passed away uh, from complications from childbirth and I don't have this information from Ancestry, but from family history, I do know that the child also passed away and did not survive. Uh, the journal goes from September 6, 1927 to April 11, 1928. And as you can see here, she passed away in January of 1929, which is just slightly over nine months after um, she and my grandfather were married. So very quickly she became pregnant and unfortunately um, did not survive. 
Uh, my grandfather eventually remarried my grandmother, um, and then my father was born in 1936. So um, this is just an interesting piece of the family history that I have been able to piece together. One of the most touching parts of the journal is this poem, which appears on the last couple of pages of the journal. This is in the same handwriting as the rest of the journal, and it is written from the perspective of a woman who has lost her husband. And of course, as it turns out, um, the journal was later passed on by my grandfather, who had lost his wife um, as he gave it to my grandmother. So this poem is very touching. Um, if you have a moment, you can pause the recording here and read over it. Um, very fitting um, for the situation um, and circumstances of Lila May's life and death. So thank you all for watching. I know this was a pretty basic program, um, but it does show you with just a little bit of information. I started with um, just some family history and birth date and some names. I was able to unravel this mystery about the author of this journal and who she was to me and my family and uncover a bit more about her life. To access Ancestry Library Edition, you start at our homepage, mccpl.lib.al.us, hover over research slash learning, and click on databases A through Z. From here, choose genealogy and click the link for Ancestry. Currently, if you are accessing this from home, you will need the password AL Patrons to access the page. Um, once you're in the library, it should automatically bring you to the page and you can go from there. Thank you so much for joining us again. My name is Suzanne Horton. I'm Head of Reference Services here at the Juliet Hampton Morgan Memorial Library, and my contact information is on the screen. I hope this was useful, and I hope this encourages you to go to Ancestry.com and play around and maybe uncover some mysteries and solve some mysteries of your own. Thank you very much. Goodbye.